Welcome back to another episode of Pro Video Coalition at NAB 2024. And I'm here with the Prismatic Company, or at least two of them. Uh, this is Abe Feinberg and Matt Feinberg. And you guys have a really interesting, I mean, the company has not been around long. Is that correct? Uh, about three months now. What are we? About three months now. But this is not your first rodeo. It, right? it isn't. Um, I also, if may or may not have heard of uh, Kinemaster or A Light Motion, but those were my uh, previous uh, projects I was involved in and exited from A, a Light Motion last year. And uh, so went directly into this. Okay. This now, time with my brother. There you go. Now you guys have uh, an interesting roadmap and an interesting product, but uh, what do you tell us, what, what problem are you trying to solve with this product and what's it gonna look like? Yeah, I mean, I would say most fundamentally what we want to solve is the, every everybody out there has a story to tell. Everybody, uh, you know, whether you are, so I, my background is in education as a teacher uh, and then working in ed tech and working closely with people who were experts in various different fields, um, you know, machine learning, programming, and had something to teach other people. But then, there, of course, there's so many storytellers, there's people who make comedic videos, uh, whatever it is that you have, uh, to share with the world. Um, right now, there's so many different ways to do that, but it also can be very overwhelming. So uh, a big part of our philosophy is making tools, making a, a platform where you can create in a way that's very natural for you as a creator, um, but you still get a very professional and very scalable result so you can have big impact. So uh, when you're making high quality content as a creator, it takes a lot of effort. And then you're also told beyond becoming the, the expert in whatever field, you know, you, you're, you, you, you became an amazing musician and now you want to teach music. And beyond that, you also now have to learn how to monetize on YouTube and get on TikTok and all of these different things. Um, as the creator, um, what uh, uh, kind of what, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Um, uh, really, how can you, how, so beyond just uh, what those skills, now you have to learn all this other stuff, can you have a tool that works very, very naturally for you uh, where you can then also get a lot more out of that effort? So you have a lot of work going into making this core content. How can you then scale uh, this to all these different platforms and formats uh, and really get more out of that so you can actually you know, make a living at what you're doing and also reach the audience that you want to reach? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to add to that as, as well, and I, and I think Abe will probably talk about this a, a little bit later on, um, but we're talking about making it easier um, for creators and scalable and for maybe for people who um, are not experienced. Um, they, they're, they're professionals in some other space, but not, not uh, professional creators. Um, but also, um, this arises out of some experiences um, that, that Abe had in, in EdTech, um, where these same challenges were faced by uh, projects with budgets is, uh, 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 in the millions of dollars. Um, so this is not applicable just for creators who don't have that experience. This also is applicable for that kind of scale as well, just in a different way. So we're going to put a link to a video on the Pro Video Coalition site along with this video. And if you want to describe a little bit about what the workflow might look, look like, uh, I understand that you're kind of addressing what a lot of people are, which is this blurring of the lines between pre-production, production, post-production, post and you're really looking at something that's quite iterative, right? Where you can begin in something and refine it. So you want to talk a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, in a, in a tr traditional approach uh, as a creator, you might, uh, if you're making a video, for example, you might start with an outline or a script. And uh, you're just writing down your ideas and you're, and you're trying to plan out what you're going to make. And one of the reasons why we all do this as creators is because we don't want to jump right into something that's a very high effort and okay, I'm, I'm making the video and I do a lot of work and now oh, I've painted myself into a corner. Um, I've seen this happen before and then you have to you know, do a lot of heavy lifting to re-record or reproduce your video. You want to have it all planned out. And the space that we think is really interesting to explore, you know, it's traditionally that's separated into two parts. You, sketch everything out first, and then you go on to make your video. But what if the sketching out, what if the writing is making the video? You know, so an artist does this. They don't sort of start at the top left corner like a printer 
and go pixel by pixel, they might sketch roughly what they want, and then they might say, that's, that's good enough, I like my sketch. It's actually, this is the style I was going for. Or they might then start to enhance and fill in the details and all this. In the same kind of way, uh, one of the uh, tools that we're building is uh, where you go in, you start writing an outline, you start writing a script, and it instead of doing that first and then making the video, doing that, writing down your ideas, writing down your script is making the video. So you start writing it, and instantly you're getting a video produced. So l literally, you enter text on the left side, and the video is produced on the right-hand side. Um, so like uh, when you uh, are working in a, a, a text editor, you can make something bold or italic. In a similar way, you can easily format something by saying, hey, this is going to be what the person hears. This is what the person is going to see. So you can have voiceover versus visual. Uh, you can say, hey, I want to pull something in, maybe from my own library. Uh, so you know, I need a picture of a, a cherry blossom for this video. Uh, I'm going to type in, you know, uh, Cherry Blossom is going to just immediately pull up my library and hone in on my, my photos that I took of Cherry Blossoms um, and drop that into the video. Uh, or if you don't have that, you could be calling out to a stock library. You could be pulling in Gen AI if that's the way you want to go. Um, all these ways to enhance it, all again just by writing. And so you're working in this very natural, easy way that a creator normally gets their ideas out and it's making it right there. And so there's never a line where you say, oh, now I'm, I'm sketching my ideas, now I've crossed this point of commitment and I can't change things. Um, but you have something immediately when you start and then you can easily update that later. So you go to a point, you say, ah, oh, now I'm ready to post it. You post it, but you're still not locked in. You could easily retype something, put a new asset in and, and, and update it. Um, if I might, uh, actually, um jump in there uh, a moment. I, I noticed uh, we've been talking about the platform and the products. Let me get some names out there yeah, um, so that we uh, uh, can talk about that more easily. Um, so the platform we're building is called Lightweave. And uh, the first three uh, apps for that are Lightweave uh, Scribe, which is the uh, what Abe was just describing. Uh, um, uh, Lightweave Interactive, which is a, a branching interactive uh, video uh, application. And Lightweave Charts. Um, and uh, um, so all three of those applications uh, that I just mentioned will be launching this year. The platform as a whole we're building in parallel. It's actually going to be launching next year and will level up, sort of uh, increase the, the, the capabilities of those applications. The reason I want to, want to jump in and say that um, was uh, um, that uh, uh, what Abe was talking about of um, uh, you know, not having a hard line where I, after I've crossed this point, I've, I'm committed, I can't go back and make changes, that's one of the advantages of Scribe is the ability to go back and make those changes. But when we add the overall Lightweave platform to that, that takes it up to another level um, where I can have pieces, fragments of content um, that I've used across multiple projects in Scribe. And if I change one of those, that could be a channel intro, it could be um, uh, one of the examples we have in, in the video you can see on, on the website that we'll be linking is uh, uh, it, it's promotional videos for a cherry blossom tour. Uh, and um, uh, the person offering the tour has changed the price, but they have videos on Instagram, videos on YouTube. Um, it might be in the YouTube description as well. Um, so you change that one content fragment, and with the power of the platform behind it, it will then update all of those places, re-render and republish those videos. So that line of we, we can't go back and, and change anything anymore um, is pushed back even after you've published. Even after you, uh, all of that has been done, you can still go back and make those changes. All right. So uh, when's the first product available, and how do people find out more about it? Um, so the very first product we're launching is Charts. That's actually going to be launching in May. Um, uh, to me, the most interesting uh, product to the other two, um, uh, uh, Scribe and Interactive. Um, our current target is to launch those this fall. Uh, okay. And um, uh, they can find out at uh, prismatic.org, prismatic.org, our website. Uh, there's even a place to sign up for early access, to get on a waiting list for early access. Uh, and that will hopefully be before the fall, but we'll see. <laughs> Do you have something to add there? Yeah, yeah the thing I'd love to add to that is, uh, you know, we with the, when you sign up for early access, we, we use it to give you early access, and also the only thing we you know are going to communicate about is is uh, the status of these uh, apps. But the the main reason why we want uh, folks to to reach out and uh, 
you know, sign up is because we really want to just talk to other creators. We want to talk to other folks, professionals in the industry. Um, you know, we didn't launch very long ago at all. The reason we're here at NAB is because we're really, um, this is the time, we're moving very fast on building this thing, but it's early enough that um, hearing from other folks in the industry is both really the most helpful for us at this stage to really make sure that we're solving the right problems and that we're solving uh, the variety of problems that, that are going to fit folks who maybe are working in a little bit different space. You know, I'm again from ed tech, so I have a lot of creator experience, but it's not the same as somebody in a different space there. Um, and also it's the time when they can have the biggest impact on the direction we go. So we really genuinely, that's one of the most important things about why we're here um, and, and for folks online, we'd love for you to come and sign up there or even just reach out to us by email on LinkedIn. Um, just get in touch with us and we want to hear what are the problems that you're facing and, and how might we solve them as we build this out. Cool, so prismatic.org, people can check you out. Thank you guys so much for joining us and sharing about what you're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you.